Linear, Hunter says linear approximation, that's true. That's another thing that's uh, talk about the, like um, Newton's method sometimes uses some linear, but the, the approximations with the name, with somebody's name used for functions. Euler, Euler, um, oh, yeah. that would be a little more, yeah, but that would be a little more, um, that's true. Maybe Euler approximation, yeah. What other name? In calculus. Maybe it's because, have you taken calculus too? Some of you have. Uh -huh. Taylor. What about Taylor? Taylor approximations? So what's the point in some of these uh, linear approximation or Taylor approximations or um, well, even Riemann approximations. What's the point? Taylor series, exactly. That that would be. Um, what's the general idea of an approximation? An approximation has. To, that's why approximations have to do with limits because it's about getting as close as you can possibly get, right? But so the idea is that there is something you're approximating, so you don't need that that one thing that's being approximated, you don't want that. You want to compute other things that are going to be just as good. So in what we have here on the board, you know, the idea would be to approximate A. And you could just simply use a partial <coughs> sum. You could just use a partial sum to then approximate the complete sum. The complete sum being here called the matrix A. Would you use this if you were like pressing it or anything? That's where we're heading. Uh, That's where we're heading. Okay. So the idea, so the question was, do you use this if you're compressing images? And that's what I what I said is that's where we're heading. Okay. So here, A, remember, what we're saying is that A is of the form U sigma V transpose. You could also write U S V transpose. So this would be A as a whole or complete, okay, or full. That's, that's what A is. And the partial sums, each partial sum is, you know, maybe is E1, E2, E3. That's not the entire sum. Right? Maybe it's just like E4 plus E5. Uh, that's, that's another part, an example, another partial sum. So you just compute sums that have a few terms, they have all the terms, right? Each of those partial sums would be an approximation. So the idea would be like, oh, but this only has one, uh, two terms. Yeah, they approximate the whole thing. Are you with me? So the partial sums, approximate the entire matrix. But these are partial sums of what? Each of those E's is a matrix. And each of those E's is a rank one matrix that specifically is a rank one that is an outer product. So each E sub K is an outer product involving the singular value, involving the vectors that go together with that singular value, okay? So here is where, and I, I need you to go and review this. That see, you remember when we talk about norms of vectors, you can also define norms of matrices. And in this case, the norm is exactly equal to one of the sigmas, okay? And so you should go and review this and the rank. And here's an example. Here's a um, rectangular matrix, two columns, six rows, right? That's two, four, six, six by two. Here is the corresponding uh, matrix U with two columns. Uh, there are only two singular values. So in this case, you would say sigma one, and this is sigma two, okay? And here's the matrix V. So as you can tell here, the shape is, this is the original matrix, right? And then um, U also has two columns. This is that shape. Uh, S is square, and then V is also square. So okay. this is something that looks like this is U, this is S, and this is V transpose, so if right? So you approximate A, you would probably just use sigma two. 
or so you would just probably just use sigma one. Well, right. So in this case, the the matrix would have, you know, in this case, A is E1 plus E2. Yeah. So your partial sum is only one of those at a time. But E1 is if you add them up, then that partial sum is exactly equal to the sum. So it's either E1 or E2. But E1 is much bigger. So you would want. Right. So E1, um, so and then that's what, so with sigma one, okay, first observation, sigma one is much larger than sigma two. They are usually sorted. The, the largest is listed first, and then they go in decreasing order. Um, E1, uh, in this case, gives this matrix, which is a, a six by two. And that's what the, well, I guess you could go ahead and compare entry by entry, but um, the, I wanna turn to the um, image application on images, okay? So as I, we started with the motive, you guys know what this photo, do you know what this is about? Yeah, this is directly related to. <laughs> this is directly related to this individual here with beautiful teeth, right? So that I don't know where this came from. Maybe the Walking Dead or something. But then towards the end, yeah, um, towards the end here in the last slide. Yeah. Is V and U just given? Mm, no, you start with A, and then you compute the sigmas, the U's, and the V's. Okay, well, do we, um, this is the Okay, hold, hold on, hold your, I'm um, gonna switch here to the activity, and then I'll walk around, I can talk to you. So here's an example of an image that is converted into a matrix, and when you uh, measure the rank of the associated matrix, that matrix has rank 717. One more thing to be noted here is that this E's, right? Um, <coughs> well, no, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. But you, when you convert the image to a matrix, are you just storing all the colors as number values? That's just yeah, well, hold on. So um, this is the image, this is A in complete detail. This is the entire full whole A matrix representing this image. One of those approximations would look like this. One of those partial sums, okay? Another approximation would look like that. Another approximation would look like this. So when you approximate, you're taking partial sums of matrices, each matrix being rank one. So when you approximate, you're computing a new matrix, which it results from adding them up. That matrix has a rank, okay? So um, that's why there is this labeled rank seven. So an approximation appears there right to the right of the original um, is an approximation that's a new matrix. And when you compute the rank of that matrix, the rank is seven. There is another uh, higher rank approximation, rank 20, uh, that appears on the lower left. And then there is another approximation, rank 50, that appears in the lower right. So, as you, so what, what happens also is that you, those partial sums, you're increasing the number of terms in the partial sums. So you're throwing additional terms in the partial sum. The complete sum in this case would involve 717 of these E matrices, okay? That would be the complete, the complete sum.